Hey everybody, Kim and Angela here for Metaphysical Matters. Go ahead, Kim. Well, let's give folks a couple of minutes to get to uh, to join us. It's Fourth of July when we are uh, doing this one, and so it's a happy uh, Independence Day, everybody. I've already heard some fireworks going off here and there, probably including, in here, including some in your backyard. Yeah, you too, when you're trying to hook up your laptop. I can't hook up the laptop, people. I am that sad that I cannot figure out how to turn on the camera, and I have done it. I should have had your. I should have been live streaming you trying to hook up the laptop. It was. It was pretty. Yeah. Uh, pretty entertaining. I, I mean, I finally got it to go on. Then it said I had to give it permission, and so I go and watch a, to watch a video for hey, someone Sharon. to tell me how to turn on the laptop for this to give it permission, and it was like a six-year-old child six-year-old foreign child. I tried. I, I couldn't. I just, I can't. So anyway, thank you all for coming in today. And again, if you don't remember, Kim and I used to have a show called Metaphysical Matters. We did it for about, what, a few years. And till, about three. Yeah, until one day we just were done with it, but now we're up with it again. Come At least for a few shows. We may do one more show. We may do a hundred. We're just going to see what happens. And um, before it was on the radio, so this is a new medium for us. And um, Kim is still down there at WNCW, and you can still hear a lot of her music. It's syndicated, actually. What's the name of your show? Well, the show that I uh, was doing called Dig, which is a, a 60s show about music of uh, the 60s that you don't hear that much, um, it is syndicated to about 15 other stations, but I just stopped doing that because I've been doing that for five years, and I felt kind of done with that. So, but... Some stations are still carrying it, but I'm yeah. not producing any more new shows. But now but you can w still hear the ones that have been out there. Out yeah, there. but now on WNCW, I'm doing a show called We Want the Airwaves, which is new wave punk and power pop. It's on Tuesday nights at 8. See, so, so. I knew this, but I forgot. <clears throat> but you should tune in to WNCW 88.7, whatever time she just said. And if you like that sort of thing, and if you can find her old show that was syndicated, which will probably still be it's on, on there. It's on iTunes. It's on iTunes. It's on iTunes. That's the 60s kind of music, but not the the Beatles kind of 60s music, the earlier uh, Doris Day kind of 60s music. You are so incredibly wrong. I'm so wrong. <laughs> it is definitely the Beatles type music. You told me, it was, I listened to it, and I heard things like Doris Day. Absolutely not. I must have got a bad show that day. Because <laughs> I heard, I heard... Arts Day. Anyway, okay, we are here today, gathered here today for Metaphysical Matters with Angela Moore. I'm Kim Clark. Thank you, everybody who's uh, tuning in. And last week, late last week, maybe it was early this week, Angela, you solicited for some ideas of some topics that people might want to hear you talk about this morning. And one of the top ones was people were asking about lost spirits and or ghosts. So let's start out by talking about what is the difference between a wayward spirit and a ghost, or is there a difference? Yes, there's a difference. Um, there, here's some way I can describe it to you, and um, this camera is making me look even heavier. Don't, don't be jealous, but it is. <laughs> I'm only half this size. Anyway, what I want to tell you is there are many worlds. This is the way I perceive it. I'm not telling you how to believe well, I perceive many worlds that kind of overlay each other, something that's not possible, but that's the way I perceive it. And in each of these realms, we're like in a realm, I feel like there are places where there are spirits that are um, no longer embodied. And I think that these, uh, on one level, you have a common spirit, a common ghost. And that would be like someone, I actually had an experience, Kim, like this, a dream, because I was wondering, I wonder exactly how it feels, and I was felt like I was given the message that it's like when you're in a dream, and the craziest stuff ever makes perfect sense, and to those, way, not wayward entities, to those common spirits, it's like that, it's like they're, they're aware, but they're not quite, but I had a dream where I woke up in the rocking chair in the living room holding my cat, and you know, stroking my kitty cat like I often do, and I was just really comfortable, and I was wearing a long uh, nightgown, and I was just, just there. And then I thought, I don't remember getting up. I don't own a long nightgown, and I don't think this is my chair nor my cat. But yet, <laughs> it was seemed perfectly normal for me and very peaceful. And then I think I kind of woke up. And what I believe is that um, I was shown what maybe the lady of the house is, that one minute you're in this world, and then the next minute, you're there. 
Now that would be like just a common spirit. Now go up a little bit. Another type of common spirit would be somebody that maybe is not ready to move on. Maybe they feel like they've got unfinished business. Maybe they're just afraid. I've had that experience and I won't waste everybody's time going to every detailed experience I have. But you know, uh, where our spirit was basically refusing to leave because he knew he was gone, but he just was afraid of what would happen to him. and. He did get moved on, and it's all good. But I think that's another level up. And sometimes those people might interact with us, and that's the kind that you might get an EVP of and all that kind of stuff. Then you go on up, and then you have people who've passed, but they're, we see like this here, and they see like that there. So they can see stuff that we can't imagine. They see and know and hear, and they help us in ways we don't understand at our current level. They got us in the back of our mind, you might say. We may have no consciousness of that. But whenever we have that need, that information, it's there when we need it. And they might do things like leave, you know, uh, send a certain bird to your home, leave a, a dime, listen to me, for you to find, or do something that's meaningful to you, so you know. And you don't, you don't, or they just pop in your mind. You haven't thought about them, and all of a sudden there they are. Maybe it's because at some level you sense them. Anyway, that's the way I perceive it. Now, wayward entities are not always human. Those entities could be um, entities that. Um, were never human that were created um, but, or, uh, differently, but maybe they interact with our spirits, and some of them could be just mischievous and naughty, and some of them might have been referred to in some cultures maybe as like the fairy people or um, such things, or possibly, um, you know, some people call them demons, and not all that, so you hear a demon, you think, you know, devil, but not all of it is actually referring to devil. Some of it's just basically spirits who have lost their way or who are perfectly content in their state and some are you go on down the line there too outright evil and will do anything and everything to thwart anybody that tries to do right because that's what they do you know just like you've got other entities like angelic beings for example who do whatever they can do to keep us on our path and our path is not always this nice smooth easy path you know sometimes it's a rocky old path you get on there and maybe your angel's making you go that bad way because that's something you needed to learn although while you're on it it sure don't feel like it or maybe you know you so I've had a lot of people want to say very bad things about the maker because you know how you love me you put me on this path but maybe there's a bigger picture than we can see at our current level and maybe this is like school and maybe this is stuff that we have to learn and maybe it's all a bunch of bull and we're all just mental and we just imagine everything I don't know I'm just sharing with you the way I perceive it I'm very long-winded I know that you know well, nobody said it I'm just gonna say it for you well, no, we're, we're all wait one thing some girl a few minutes ago says, why am I so sad? If you're struggling like that constantly with sadness, A, go to a doctor. We live in the 21st century. Don't suffer if you don't have to. You probably got an imbalance with, you know, your hormones or with your chemicals. There's no shame in it. It just got your body. It's got flawed. Set that aside. Sometimes, yes, you can get an attachment from an entity. They break off in pieces, you might say. They see your body. That's, oh, there's my body. I need to get in there. And they attach, usually back here. And if they do, you will go into either fear or you will go into great, um, what is the word, uh, depression. Because your body is not made to, to house but one spirit at a time. That's it. You're not, you're not meant to have but yours, yours in there. Now, there's a few exceptions where people do have dual spirits in there. That's another subject. But the thing is, and I guess I have seen that with people. The thing is, that could be that too, but you've got help on the other side. Ask your angels, it's their job, you have to ask them sometimes to remove that. You sometimes can do this and actually cleanse your inner energy too and, and kind of get rid of them. You can, um, you can do, say, get off of me. Sometimes that works. Seriously, sometimes it does. Imagination is the the thing, the bridge from one reality to another. Imagine that you're surrounded in light that you bring up from the universe, down from the universe here, up from the maybe the earth here until you're filled with light. Imagine it getting bigger and bigger until you're surrounded in light. That could help them drop off too. So if you're not being treated for depression or you're being treated and it's not that, you've not had anything that's really bad happen to you because sometimes now, Studies show a person can be really depressed for an event, and one year later, <clears throat> believe it or not, they're usually back to their uh, current their normal state. That's just a s statistic I read. But like I said, do what you want. It's best I can tell you on that deal. Well, when I've been to you uh, for readings, you've also talked about, 
you know, in the context of things being attached to you, that sometimes thought forms can get attached to you or just fragments of energy. Right. It's, it's what I was saying a minute ago that sometimes people have an emotional thing happen. It's like bits and pieces of that energy can break off and, and actually attack or attach to people. It's mindless, but it's just bits and pieces. It's like dirt. You go down a dirt road. You know, the dirt that gets up, it settles on you. Sometimes there's energy in other realms, other realities that are kind of just broken off bits and things and it can settle. And your human body is not made for that. And usually it'll fall off by itself. Okay? So anyway, next. Are there some things, your opinion, that we can, that we maybe do without knowing that creates an opening or an opportunity for these, these things to attach? Yeah, sometimes you can, um, you know, some people say like dabbling in the paranormal uh, can actually open a door and sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. Some people think seeing somebody like me can actually do that and I think if you're not the right kind of me, you know, the kind that, uh, you know, is more about using people, that's definitely not good and uh, I've heard some bad stories from people but also not everybody's like, you know, bad or out to get you though. I'm just saying some people and usually if you use your common sense you can tell who's who. But, you know, some people are afraid of the Ouija board. And, yeah, it can be used to open a portal. And it could also be used for great fun at a kid's, you know, birthday party. It's in your intention. But, yeah, you know, you can open doors through anything if you're dealing with paranormal stuff. And so you do want to be careful. You do. Um, I think that you have to use your common sense. And if something... I'm sorry I'm being sluggish on this answer, but I'm getting kind of a lot of information once here. If you feel like this is important, if you feel like this don't feel right, I don't like doing this, something's telling me not to, then just don't. Just don't. Usually, your own inner self will be a guide to you. Most of the time when people do open the door to something evil, they, they can trace it right back. I did this thing. Now, a hundred other people might have done that very thing and had no problem, but this person might have had a feeling not to do that thing, and that's because maybe something was telling them, for you, this particular thing may not be best. Okay, that's about the best I can tell you on that. But yeah, anytime you uh, have intention maybe to, to go in places that your conscience is telling you not to, let me put it that way, you're probably not going in the right direction. And I feel comfortable saying that. And if I could go back and cut out everything except that, I would, but I, I can't. So. Are there places, uh, physical places that we can go that maybe have more of these kind of entities hanging around waiting to jump yeah, on you? Yeah, there's hot spots and portals, okay? Anywhere I go, <laughs> evidently, is a hot spot. So yes, there are also people who have a certain vibration who can go probably anywhere, the most calm place ever, and just by their energy, they're going to stir something up. But then there's other places that anybody, the most calm, non-kind of person can go and get stirred up. So absolutely, there are places that are, um, as I said, hot spots in the whole western North Carolina with all its mountains and its pockets and all that kind of stuff. These are places that can absolutely um, mess up, you know, your energy. I don't know if the text show when they come in, but I just got a text, and I'm sorry if that shows up on the screen cam. But anyway, um, some places like... You know, where maybe a lot of tragedies happen too. You know, for example, people that maybe go to some of the uh, places where there's been great battles, like up in Gettysburg, for example, well known for all the hauntings and whatnot. And it's because I think such great loss of life perhaps opened portals, you know, and it opened these portals. And, and because of that, um, people, entities, spirits could go and come. And I think that, you know, dying in that kind of confusion and horror, a lot of these are those lost souls. And to them, there's no time. So for us, well, they've been there over 100 years. Oh, thank you for letting me know that, that the text don't show up. But um, to them, it's just right now. There's no time where they are. It's just right now. So to them, they're just doing this thing over and over and over, like 150 years for us. But to them, it's just, I'm just doing this for the first time. But um, that also opens portals. Not only was it maybe started out to be just flat, not much of nothing, but it opened a portal. What about more mundane kind of places that might attract, <clears throat> excuse me, wayward spirits? 
Um, there was a guy named uh, Robert Monroe who back in the 60s had all these out-of-body experiences. And one thing that he observed, I want to see what your thoughts are on this, is when he kind of floated by, for want of a better term, a bar, he would see a lot of um, disembodied spirits kind of hanging around waiting for somebody to get drunk enough for them to jump in. Yeah, that happened to me once. I was actually waiting on somebody. It was daytime, and um, I forgot why we were at that bar. We were there to see a manager about something. And um, I went outside to sit on the steps, broad daylight. Bar's not even open, and I started weeping. And I don't mean like I was sobbing. It was just weeping. It was this mass of water going down my face, and I just felt like... I wanted to die basically and I didn't know it was many 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 years ago and I wasn't you know as aware as I am now of things and it was like just extreme depression and that's because these kind of energies these lost energies or these mischievous energies or these broken bits of energies they tend to hang around places where people get inebriated because why because when you're inebriated you, your defenses are down, your natural defenses. So they can attach and absorb your energy, which is very yummy evidently for some of them. And um, it could really make you go into an extreme depression right then, right there, and you don't even know why. The thing is, the good news is, they tend to fall off on their own accord if you don't, you know, remove them yourself. As soon as I went for a little walk and got away, that lifted and it was like, what was that about? I mean, that was just crazy. Well, that's what I'm telling you. These things can happen uh, in those kind of situations, you know, if you're intoxicated. And that's why people that, you know, maybe sometimes get a little lost with drugs, um, not the good kind, not the, not your heart medicine, you know, but the kind that, uh, not your keeping your brain straight medicine, but the kind that uh, maybe, you know, is not, not what's best for you. And those can actually, you know, cause you to have some difficulty. Um, they, that's why uh, people who study demon possession and stuff, there's three things that they say. And this is, I think Billy Graham said this, and, you know, you probably don't, I don't you can believe or not believe. I'm just telling you what I read. That um, witchcraft, drugs, and um, alcohol? No. Drugs, witchcraft, and paranormal. What is wrong with me? Um, you know, paranormal stuff. That is what, I'm sorry, I think I'm actually getting a lot of information and people who know me know that when I start getting stuff coming in, I kind of get into the distraction. That's why I always apologize in advance for all my nonsense when I do a session, but I can't help it. It's part of just being me. But you get those three things together and I'm sorry for the lag, but you know, this is live and what are you gonna do? Um, you're inviting, you really are inviting mischievous and bad things in. I don't mean Wicca witchcraft or nice people who just like to, you know, worship nature. I, I don't do that, but I know very good people who do. I don't mean any respect. I'm talking about the more dark kind where you want to be doing harm, that kind. Um, you do that, you mix it with drugs, you probably just might as well go out with a big sign and says, please, come and possess me. I would like to sell my soul <laughs> to something evil, okay? Uh, they can, somebody asked me, can they take over? They can't, listen to me. They can't do this without your permission, okay? But you sometimes inadvertently give permission when you open doors that, like I said, you will know I shouldn't do this. You open those kind of doors. And let me just tell you this, it does come in levels. First you get obsessed, you get a thought on your mind, you're just so obsessed about something. And then you start getting influenced, you know? You do stuff you might not ordinarily do. And then finally, the next you go on down, you start getting possessed. And once you get possessed, you are doomed. Not much can be done for you. There is something maybe, but most people end up in an institute or die within like a year or two. Wow. And that does happen. Um, I'm not taking it back, you know. I know y'all are science-minded, a lot of you. I am too, believe it or not. But, you know, I know what I know and I've seen what I've seen. So if you ever, like, suddenly start getting obsessed with your tarot, you can't put it down. Or obsessed with psychics, and you can't put them, you know, quit calling the 900 number. Uh, if I see somebody getting that way towards me, I, I push them back. I'm not going to allow that. Um, if you get somebody that, uh, you know, they're just wanting to, like, they just can't get out of their mind, they got to keep going back and checking something, keep going back and checking something. A, they may just have anxiety that needs to be treated. Having said that, you might be in the first stages there of something very, very, very bad, and it could end up in a very bad way. Okay, anyway, that's the best I can tell you on that deal. 
Well, let's turn to the, the lighter side of the spirits that are around us. What about our loved ones? Does just about everybody that comes to see you, do you sense loved ones around them who have passed? I think there's people that are, are definitely our loved ones. I actually think I feel a lot of my friends who left too soon and my family, which I, I'm certain I do. But yes, I think sometimes there may be people we never met who may be helping us through a certain task. They may be here just today to help you with a certain thing. You know, that's a lot of gods. And I can't, did we talk about gods last week? Let me be, we did. Some. Okay, I don't need to give you that analogy. It was on last week's then, but it, you can look at it. It's on here somewhere. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes there might be a God that just comes for a certain task to help us because it helps them in ways we may not, as I said, understand our current level. And then sometimes I feel like there are people who have not done very well, um, didn't get something resolved, and maybe who did not be on their best behavior in this realm, who may be trying to do um, a little bit better now and maybe helping us helps them. And there's also very bad things out there, as I said, and you know, that's even in your Bible there about you got like a, the devil's like deceiving like a, a lion whom he can get a hold of. I know I didn't say that right. I'm not my right mind right now. But um, so you get the, you get the, the energy that I'm trying to put out there right now. There are things out there that would be more than happy to consume you their goal is to break up your family. Their goal is to bring misery and unhappiness and spread whatever darkness they can because that's what they do, okay? But they can't do it without your permission. If you don't open the door, you have to have the intent. You just want to stay away from stuff that your gut says, don't do that. And I don't know why we keep harping on this, but evidently there's a reason because one of you people out there is probably struggling with it or we wouldn't. Next. Um, you know, I've read, you talking about science. There's science behind this now uh, that you can actually that you're in your DNA what's transmitted more than or just as much as physical you know, characteristics is the experience of your ancestors and their emotions etc etc and you can at this late date actually through your actions help heal those who came before you which may draw some of your ancestors to you energetically what do you think about I that? I think that's awesome, and people should read more about that. Google it and read, because I have actually read a little bit about that, and it's above my pay grade, so I'm not going to comment on things I don't really know that much about, but what I read, I thought it was very intriguing. Makes sense to me. I think you should definitely look into it, because it's good. It's a good thought. Um, do animals see ghosts? Yes. Anything else to say for <laughs> next? <laughs> yes, they do. And uh, let's see, I think it's cats, and I hate to say this word, but rats um, actually have something in their eyes that can help them even see more than your family dog or the horse, because yeah, horses for sure too. And probably wild animals, I don't know about wild animals, but I believe even they have you know, heightened awareness, but I don't think that mostly uh, spirits are out there aggravating them as they do we conscious beings. But I've had too many people report that they have seen, you know, their dog act up and look in a certain place. I have that happen here with one of my dogs. And absolutely, um, there are, are things like, uh, your, you know, cats acting out and all this kind of thing. And somebody said, can animal be ghosts? Yeah, I believe they absolutely can come back. And I believe um, domestic animals often do. Um, I've had too many people tell me that they feel that this is their dog come back in a new dog form. And I think I've, I think I've had that happen. But um, there was a horse. Actually, there's a bunch of horses over here in Clinchfield that people have heard that are like um, running, galloping. It's I remember like, you telling yeah, me about that. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to off camera just for a minute because I need to reach a Kleenex here. But they feel like, I'm still here, people. But anyway... They feel like uh, they've heard, and more than one person, several people on this street have heard like they think that there's an earthquake or something at first, and then it's like horses, and they think the horses are gonna be, you know, traveling right through their home. So, um, and there was a horse where my parents lived that passed away out there. They tried to save the poor thing, but it died, and people have seen it, you know, galloping. That was many, many years ago, but I, I'm assuming it's still happening. But, you know, so many people have seen their dog um, I believe I saw my dog and um, one of my dogs. So, yeah. I just, there's some folks sharing their experiences with uh, 
their pets staring at a certain uh, area in their house. My cat Rufus does this number in the house. Like he's watching something flying around that I don't see. Babies do that too. You know, a lot of people will talk about how they'll be holding a baby. Um, yes, honey, we think we see them and hear the spirits share. Some people will see, um, you know, like babies, they'll be holding an infant. Infants like looking right here and smiling and laughing or right here. So I think that little children, usually six and under, have a very strong connection still to the world from which they came and maybe let's say a foot in each realm and a lot of them, if probably all of them, are actually able to see many of those dimensions I talked about such as, um, you know, spirits, angels, and uh, whatever. And sometimes, you know, I've had people tell me even negative stuff. Usually it's just not terrorists with negative stuff. But sometimes they do see mischievous <laughs> entities as well. And I have felt like sometimes there's mischievous entities that aggravate animals. They try to get them st wound up. My like Kevin has got to where he'll come in here and bark at a certain place in the kitchen. Then he'll run around and bark at the same place on the back of the wall in the other room. No other dog now is hearing anything. We don't have mice in the walls. You know, I don't know, but it's like, he's, he's, you know how your animal has its own bark, right? You know, with somebody at the door, this or that. And he's he is very, very mad about whatever it is he's seeing. And he's looking in the same spot. So I think that, um, you know, he's given one of our spirits what for. Here's somebody sharing that they do something called clean your genes to release your bloodline. So there's a lot of work being done uh, in that concept. That's really cool stuff. I think that's awesome. You should post something like that on my line to, to let people know about it. That's very cool. Um, just a couple more questions on this and we'll wrap it up. Um, whenever you see things out of the corner of your eye and your peripheral vision, are those entities, what's going on there? Remember when I said that about cats and rats' eyes can see more? And there's been some sort of study here and there about what all they can detect and including, I think, into other realms. Um, it's that same thing. You know, it's a physical thing. Your eyes are made a certain way that you can perceive light. But sometimes in your peripheral vision, I think you might be able to catch a little bit more. So maybe if you do that again, rather than, you know, like this, which you're going to do, but maybe try to do this and just kind of see if you can pick up something. Because looking doesn't mean they went away. doesn't mean they're not there. It just means that you're not able to use that part of your eye to see what you want to see. What about when you hear somebody call your name? That happens to me on a regular basis. You know, I think it's kind of funny. My, um, my grandmother, I never got to meet her. She died when my dad was a baby. But my aunt used to say that she would say, there's no such thing as ghosts. But if you ever meet one, you're supposed to say, what in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are you doing here? And sometimes I think that, what was the question? Uh, the question was when you hear somebody call your name, what oh, was that? I think that that was maybe asked her that in reference to people hearing their name called. People have been hearing my name called, their own name called rather, in my voice. I've heard that. For years. Yes, I've heard that. I've had a lot of people. You know, unexpectedly, I heard my name called in my voice, actually. Now, that I, is weird. I did. And, you know, and uh, it's happened not just in this house, but every place I've lived. So, your name is a vibration. Everything that exists vibrates. Your name is a vibration that you're used to. It's what you respond to. With nothing else, you'll tune out, right? But you won't tune out your name. So, I think that can come through where something else can't. And maybe it's because somebody wants to tell you something. Maybe it's because they've already told you something, but it's back here. As I told you, there when you need it. Comes here when you need it. But maybe it's to like let you know, I'm here and I'm saying stuff and I just want you to know I'm here. Okay. I think for every being out there, there is a reason. Maybe the same and maybe a different reason for every being that's out there. There may not be a blanket answer. You know, I might have heard this name for this reason, and other people heard it at the same time in more than one occasion. Standing one time in this house, talking to my friend many years ago, and we heard not a woman's voice this time, but a man's voice, boom out, Angie. <laughs> and I just thought, like, what, and leaned back to her, I could see the front door. Cause I just thought this man had come up on the porch and was, you know, talking through the front door. She stopped talking, she heard it too. Nobody there. So sometimes maybe they just want to get your attention. And Michelle, keep at it. I, I think that a lot of people's businesses kind of drop down right around this time. 
but I do think it'll bounce. I think it's just you're gonna have to be patient and maybe a little bit for the long haul, but you'll probably find that there's a trend where it'll be times when it's normally busy and times when it's normally not, and for a lot of people, this is a normally not, okay? But probably it will. That'll be a good uh, topic for us to pick up on next time. We can talk about the flow of energy and that kind of thing. And we had some other topics that people sent in that we didn't get to this time, and we'll, we'll put them on the list for next time. But we've gone about half an hour. Okay, people, so, thank you so much. Very cool. Thanks a lot, everybody. I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be back. We may start doing this weekly. We may do it every two weeks, once a month, randomly. We don't know. Right now, Kim, I'm kind of thinking maybe once every two weeks feels kind of good, but maybe, maybe sooner. Let me know okay. if you're interested. Whatever. I'm up for it. And um, thank you, Lauren. You're too kind. All right. Bye, people.